Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to be creating tables using HTML. In this video, we'll demonstrate in detail about basic HTML table structure, how to use the different attributes that goes with HTML tables like border, cell spacing, cell padding, and much more. Please stay tuned. When it comes to building a web page, it is very important to have a solid understanding of table structure. Since tables allow us to organize data and content in an organized way, table data is structured in the form of rows and columns. The intersection of a row with the column forms a table. So, the individual cells contain the actual data. Data can be in the form of text, in the form of image, or even in the form of video content. This example illustrates the structure of basic table used to arrange the planet by its distance from the sun, their respective mass with its time taken for one orbit to revolve around the sun. Here we have a table with columns and rows which gives us 25 individual cells in total. Let us start off by creating this table in standard HTML5 document. For this, you will need to open your text editor and we will also need to set up the basic HTML page structure as we learned in earlier lessons. Here we have the basic HTML structure. Once you have the basic HTML page structure is created, go ahead and save your file on your computer. Let's save the file as a table.html. Be sure to put the HTML extension at the end. By now, this should all look familiar and the code block for our table will be inserted in between the body tags. We will begin by adding our open and enclosed table tag over here. The table tag also has several attributes. First, we can specify the width of the table with, for now, we will put the width as 100% with equals to 100%. Later, we will come back to this widget attribute and show you its effect on the table structure because there are different ways the widgets can be stated. Once we have our table created, next we can set a border for our table. Let's set the border to 1 pixel and you can increase this value if you want for a ticker border or you could say it's zero or no border. Next, we can specify the cell spacing and the cell padding attribute. Why these two table attributes are important? Well, the cell padding will define the amount of space around the cell contents. The cell spacing, on the other hand, will determine the amount of space between each cells in your table. And the unit of measurement for cell spacing and cell padding is also pixel. Here we have a graphical demonstration about cell spacing and cell padding. Once we have defined this attribute, we can start adding rows and columns. Each row is defined by an open and closed TR tag, which stands for table row. So I will create one row beginning with and inside each row. I can create any number of columns. That means within the table tag we nest rows and then within each row we nest a series of cells and these cells are a place where we put our content. So our table had four columns and a column is represented by open and close TD tag, which is table data. You can insert your content in between the closing and the opening of TD tag. So the first part of our table was heading here. But the first row would look like, okay, now let me add this first row. The first one is planet, distance, mass in kilogram, and time for orbit. So we will create the R. Inside this row, we have four columns, which is represented by TD. Okay, here we have the first one is planet, distance in kilometer, planet, distance in kilometer, mass in kilogram, and time for one orbit. Now let me save and open this document. Okay, now here we have our table. So over here, you will observe the effects of cell spacing and cell padding. So now let me change cell spacing 0 
and share padding tape and refresh here we have right okay so remember the first column was the planets and we'll put the name of the planet label in each of the first columns and then their respective distance from the sun in the second column and in the third and the fourth column we'll put the mass of each planet and its time elapsed for one orbit to revolve around the sun respectively okay with that being said let's continue on creating the second row the second row contains a planet mercury at this distance from the sun its mass and the time lapsed for one orbit so over here create tr and here we have here we have the second table okay now let me copy this four times and change its value okay here we have here we have the second row the third row the fourth row the fifth and the sixth row now let me save and refresh it in my browser here we have all right now let me add this superscript on this so to add a superscript we should use a special tag which is sub okay here we have here is a tag inside sub tag we add the power here eight and now copy this over here change this into two and two so we should add a superscript over here when we save and refresh in my browser here is cool right all right okay you can change the background color of the table into the color you want to do this we use an attribute which is bg color so over here bg color and write the color you want over here and then and then save and refresh in my browser here you have a table having a yellow background color one thing you may have noticed here is this html table is a full width of the browser content area why because we specified a table width 200 percent you'll observe that if we change the size of the browser window the table expands and contracts and always maintain 100 percent of the browser window right now let's see what would happen if i change the width into 75 percent so Go back to the source code and just change the width of the table into 75% and then refresh the page. Now we can see that the table always maintains 75% of the browser content area. This shows us when we use the value of the width in percentage based, the table will always expand and contract to maintain that percentage, which is the specified percentage of the browser content area. But what if if you wanted to have a fixed table width so it doesn't expand or contract with the browser window for that we would need to change the width from percentage to fixed value so let's go ahead and change from 75 percent to 750. now if you don't specify the percentage that converts the table width into a pixel based table width so 750 pixel will be a new width of this table we are going to save the file and i am just going to reload the web browser and you will notice that no matter how big or small the browser window is the table is always stay at 750 pixel as you see here any table should have a table description in order to tell the browser what your table is all about so in order to tell the browser what your table is all about we should use a special tag that haven't seen before which is table caption and it should be placed next to the opening of table tag so over here caption and inside the caption tag you should add the title of the table you want to put so over here now let me save and refresh here we have this introduced to the user and the browser just it is a table title so it increases the semantic richness of your table as well so as you see here the content inside the caption tag is placed at the center and as is placed as you see here, the opening of a table tag and tell the browser and the user just it is a table title over here instead of using td it's better to use th on the first row instead of using td it's better to use th in order to tell the browser it is a table heading it helps the text to be bold and the browser know whether it is a heading or not save and refresh 
here we have right this tells the browser it is a table heading okay on the next lesson we will continue how we can nest one html table inside another table not only this when we are working with tables it is necessary to combine two columns into one so to do that you should know how to merge html table cells i'm very happy to show you how you can merge html table cells finally we are going to create this invoice template table is only using HTML. You see, what cool is this? We will apply the knowledge you will just learn about HTML table and apply on to create this beautiful invoice template table on the next episode. If this sound is interesting, make sure to subscribe and press the notification bell icon to be the first person to access the video while we upload a daily programming training video just like this one. Don't be shy to like and share this video to your beloved friend. With that being said, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.